Well, welcome everybody. This is Jim Sanders with Brian Mumma. We're at Almquist Field, home of the Rock Island Rocks, Rock Island Public School Stadium. Uh, it's the QCA TV, Channel 38, Cost Communication, a Family Ties production. And we've got Western Big Six football. Brian, who do we have tonight? We got the Allman Pioneers and the UKHS Panthers, and we have a beautiful night. It's Big Six football, and we're right in the heart of this season. No, we are. We are. We're, what, midway through? Uh, UT and, and Allman both had a, a little struggle here in their last uh, ball game. UT got beat by Moline. We had that ball game for fans. Uh, Allman's got uh, two losses here in, in the conference with. Uh, Rock Island and uh, to Moline, so that's uh, they're in. You know, they're both about the same. We had do both those ball games. You and I did them both, and Moline dominated both teams. So this should be a great matchup, I think. Oh yeah, well, I've certainly been impressed with Moline and that game last week. We were here and hitting clear up there in the box. Right, a hard hitting ball game right. all the way. And I think we can expect the same kind of thing tonight. Oh, I agree with you. I think that. Uh, uh, both these teams got something to prove. This is UT and Allman. The records don't make any difference. No, I mean, and uh, and Allman is, is is rebuilding. You know, you take a look at the lineup, and we t we called all their ball games the last couple of years, those playoff games and so forth. There are not many of those same names are showing up again. I think if uh, if I were to talk about Allman uh, getting ready for a ball game tonight, I think Healy has got to become a factor. Teams have been able to to kind of take him out of the. The equation, Seems and the uh, that's right. And Barry has been uh, doing a lot of the work of running the football, but I think if Healy can start uh, getting loose, that line can block a little bit better maybe, or he can get loose on the perimeter and use his speed, I think they'll become a much better football team. Uh, second thing with Allman, they seem to want to throw the ball a little bit this year. Right. And whether or not they can get that down to where it's really uh, efficient and they can do it over and over and over, and then, then it could really be a problem. Oh, I agree with you. Somebody. I agree. How about UT? Oh, but UT, uh, I hear we got a few changes tonight. Yeah, we do have a couple. A couple. About them a little well, bit? sure. I think uh, Coach Tracy's made a couple adjustments. One, I think he's going to go uh, Mike Freeman at quarterback in place of Ryan Lemon. And uh, he, does a, uh, he does a nice job. He came in last week. Lemon's got a sore hand. I think it would, uh, he's got it banged up a little bit. But also, Lemon's going to slide over and play in that tailback spot. So I think uh, we'll see a couple of different faces, uh, numbers in that backfield. So, uh, I think we're ready to roll here. So I think really uh, interesting this year as we go on. So many of the teams, Moline did it, you know, UT's doing it tonight. Alleman did it with their change of their quarterback. Right. At, uh, at Geneseo. <laughs> yeah, exactly uh, right. There's a lot of like, like the teams are growing as the season goes on and they're trying different things and different combinations and seeing just what all they can do. Well, I think too, and in Western Big Six, there's a lot of conferences. We got some great coaches in this league. And, and if, they, if you have to make an adjustment, you make an adjustment. Uh, I think tonight, the Lemon, uh, Ryan is a, a natural running back. I mean, that's his position. And I, th I think he has done an excellent job at quarterback for the Panthers uh, throughout the, the, the season. But again, if he's banged up a little bit and they want to throw the ball a little, I think that's the key. Freeman throws the ball better. Uh, Lemon throws the ball like a running back. And that's not a, not a drawback. It's why he's a running back. You know, okay. if he'd been a quarterback and could have thrown it, he probably would have played quarterback for several years. But in the option attack, having a quarterback like Ryan is a big plus. But teams are going to make us looks like they're going to make us throw the ball a little bit and uh, Freeman is a little bit better so let's just see how that turns out yeah I think that's going to be interesting <coughs> to see the adjustments that were made for tonight's ball game right and there's one middle adjustment that I'm sure both teams are going to come to play I mean, no question about that this like you said and the field conditions are perfect it's a UT uh, Alleman football game and uh, the heads will be bopping in against each other both teams are kind of banged up right now after playing Moline they're going to bruise you a little bit and Alleman's had to go uh, Basically, they've gone, uh, what, uh, gee, three or four games in a row with the, with the, the tough ball game against uh, Rock Island. Stretch, now they got the pants. I'll tell you, what do you think? Can you make it across that good turn? Oh, I think we can. We've got, uh, wait a minute, wait. <laughs> Wait, I'm just trying this to sneak by. Coach Smith, this is your second time by, well, and you're not going to let you do this. I was without looking for my wife, and now you don't think she's here. Yeah, well, we're talking fairly close together, not necessarily because we're just that good of friends, but we only have one microphone. <laughs> and uh, If you'd like to get real close and share it, uh, you could get in here otherwise. How about if you just read my lips? <laughs> hey, congratulations on a great sophomore hey, victory again. Kids are well, playing our well. Boys have, our boys have come a long ways this year. We're real happy with the way they... They're working hard in practice, and they're responding to what we're trying to do, and that's that's very rewarding. We we, we uh, got a shutout tonight, and uh, we harped all week on no big plays, and we've given up big plays this year for touchdowns, and, and the boys played hard, and they, they played pretty smart and responded. Uh, we're very pleased with the way they've come around. They didn't win very many games last year as freshmen, and they're they're having a good time this year. Yeah, they're and several things. I think uh, 
Uh, I think uh, if, if you sat down and take a look at that coaching staff that you're working with uh, at that sophomore level, uh, you take a varsity staff and make them a sophomore staff in a hurry. And I'll tell you, I, I, I've just been pleased the way the well, kids have come along with your and Coach Brewers and, and uh, Coach Freeman. That's, that's quite a crew. That's quite an addition to having Gary Freeman. You bet. This, uh, you know, just having that extra body there, uh, trying to work a full, a full squad with only two coaches is very difficult. And Gary Freeman is has come in the last two years. Last year he helped us with the varsity, and, and then this year he's come in, and, and uh, Coach Burns and I kind of put a headlock on him in the spring when we find out we're going to be the sophomore coaches, and he said, oh, I'd love to do it. So, And uh, what can you say about Mike Brewers that hasn't yeah. been said? Nope. I mean, you know, I'll put him against any line coach in the state uh, for his dedication to the game and the way he works with the kids and and, and uh, gets the message across. Yeah. He's, a, he's, a, he's a good person and a great coach, and, uh, and uh, you know how many years we go back together. Yeah. So I think yep. This is fun. We're it is fun. fun. Well, congratulations yeah. again. Thank Keep you. up the good work. Thank huh? you. Thank okay, you. fun next week. Huh? Have a nice broadcast. Oh, we will. We will. And we'll see you soon. Next week, wherever we're at, don't be there. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, we'll be right back. We uh, are ready to go here. Yes, the Pioneers right. and the Panthers uh, from uh, Rocky Stadium. This is Jim Sanders and Brian Mumma, and we'll see you in just a minute. All righty. Here at the field, the Panthers just took the field. The Pioneers missed if we did. And we appreciate their independent insurance services incorporated. Where are they located at, Brian? They're located at 1519 Locust Street in Davenport, Iowa. That's neat. Phone number. Hard to find. No, 383-55. Give them a call for any needs. Going to have the starting lineups introduced here. Holloman, the tunnel, ready to take the field. I'll be surprised, Brian, if this isn't a real outstanding football game. It sure, sure should be. I know that uh, Allman has given everybody a good ball. Game. They have, no Even question. They haven't uh, won them all, and you can get Moline. That's right. So. Well, you know, Moline dominated both the Panthers and the Pioneers, but on the other hand, both the games were close, and a play here or a play there, and, and those teams might have won that ball game. So I'm. I'm kind of looking forward to uh, seeing these two teams knock heads tonight. Look, there's that. Nope, look there. We've got that hoop. Oh. I that hoop. Oh, That's yes, right. This is always our concern here. It's become kind of a tradition here at uh, on Channel 38. Here they come. What kind of game could this be? Coach, this could be a root hug or die kind of ball game. Right? Right now. Good. It could be. Hey, look at the excitement, huh? They look fine. <laughs> yeah. I tell you, but you know, we talked about more. T looked a little more fired. It, it's what happened, right? Well, let's, well, let's go with our starting lineup. Start for the Panthers going to be number 45. First start for Ricardo Harris. Number 63 for Oakland, Brian for the Panthers, number 75, going to be a defensive tackle. That's Brian Inman. And number 61, John Kearney for the Pioneers. Number 76 for the Panthers, Kevin Ward will start as a defensive tackle. Adam Stinson, number 60 for Allen. 83 is a defensive end. That's Ben Fagerlin. And number 62, John Arnold. 63 for the Panthers is Scott DeFries, another defensive end. And number 50, the Pioneer. I don't have his. We'll catch him in a minute. Matt Harris is number 31 for the Panthers at linebacker. There's number 80 there for all of them. Wood, we know him. Number 40 for the Panthers, the other linebacker, Mike Hancock. And number 86, Seth Taranis, the Pioneer. Coming out for the Panthers, number 22, that's Mike Ricky. And number 84 is Matt Brandy. And starting in the defensive secondary is Ryan Lemon, number 15. And number 36, Mike Berry, the pioneer. Cody Duran, number 11, defensive secondary. And Bill Healy, number 33, for the pioneer. And the last defensive back, number one, is Brian Kendall. And number seven is Aaron Ruthie. Head coach for the United Township High School Panthers is Mike Tracy. And Dana Just is the coach over there at Alleman. That's a nice meeting there at midfield, you know it, Coach? Yes. It really is. Yeah. That is neat. Officials are ready. The Panthers are ready. The Pioneers. 
Let's get free to rumble here. Root hog or die time? Yes, sir. We gotta figure out who number 50's name is. Okay, we're gonna work on that. You get him started, I'll be right back. I'm on my way. You can count, count on me. I got an answer. Uh, I'm going to get it for you. Chris Edwards is moving from number 90 to number 50 because he's going to play some offensive tackle. So Edwards is number 50. New teal kickoff. You talk. That's your change. Number 34. I'm sure you talked about Terrence Clark and his ability to kick. Let's see what happens. The line shot. That ball's loose, Bryant. Eighty-five. Adam Strupp made that stock, knocked it down, and saved yourself some good field position right there and fell on it. We did a nice job because that ball was really squirting around there. Well, the Pioneers will take over first and ten on their own 32-yard line. You got them, Bryant. Here come the Pioneers. Aaron Ruthie leading him up the line. We got movement on the defense there. I don't know if anybody moved on the offense or not. Man, yeah, we're going to find out real quick here. The Holloman lined up offside. Did something wrong there. First, first and 15. They call them being offside, which means you simply lined up across the, the nose of that football. So that's a mistake you don't want to. You it does. The, ball for the first time, you lose five yards. <laughs> yeah, you have the ball. I know it. Huh? Well, and you know, you've just got the kids pumped up. You're ready to go. Let's go out. You know, this is if Alman wins this ball game, it's got to be considered an upset. And I'm sure they've been planning for this the whole day and then their whole week, actually. And now we're all of a sudden first and 15. More movement. Healy gets the ball and he's piled up in the backfield. It looks like he's going to lose a couple yards there, coach. Well, the Panthers were there in a real, real big hurry. A little handback action that time. Inman's in the middle of that. Couple linebackers in there. DeFreeze was in there. We talked in the pregame that Healy's going to have to get more involved, and that was the, the very first play they had in mind. Maybe a little misdirection. Chris Edwards is lining up at right tackle. Yeah, I, yep. Ruthie rolling out here. Could nice tackle that time. Mike Hancock on a real nice tackle. 83, Ben Fagerlin kind of kept him on the run, but uh, Hancock finishes it off. Was he looking to throw there? I think initially he was, Brian, but the problem was Fagerlin put so much pressure on him, he just had to put the ball in his arm and run with it. Took him out of his plan. In a hurry. I agree. I agree. Well, 84, Matt Brandy's bringing in the third down and, and 16 play. Yep. Yep. Might be more than that. Might be closer to 19. Either way, it's it's it's, it's in the playbook somewhere. Oh, they get him. Nice play. Nice play. Ryan Wood on that catch. He's a nice tall boy. He got good hands. He, every time we watch him play, he does a nice job. Well, Brian, you take a look at that situation. It forced Solomon into a punting situation, but without the five-yard penalty and the negative play on the on the quarterback keeper, Solomon could have kept possession of the ball that time. Yeah, it's those little things. Little things that make so much. Well, punt formation back for UT to receive this. Cody Duran and number two is Ron Drew. And the Panthers have had good luck with their punt returns. And they're going to have a chance. Drew fumbles the ball, rolls back to the 10, back to five. Drew picks it up. If he gets outside, he's got a chance. The big gainers, you know. Boom. Oh, big hit on the boundary at the 30 at the 20 yard line, Bryant. Barry with a hit over there, knocked him out of bounds. Well, Drew did a nice job after he fumbled that uh, kick. There were several. There were several green shirts. But I'll tell you what. By the time you got around the bend there, Alman had kind of now yeah, they kind of overran that thing. Freeman at quarterback, as mentioned before, fullback inside on the carry. Lemons running at tailback tonight, opening at fullback for the Panthers. Ends up being number 31. That's Matt Harris. He got the carry. 63. Brian Arnold at the bottom of that pile getting up. 
It's a gain of about two yards. Make that second and eight for the Panthers. The ball out now at about the 21 yard line. Two wide receivers to the right. That's Duran and number 81. That's Pete Douglas. Lemon on the pitch. Keeps his balance and runs out to near the 30 yard line. Oh, he did a nice job of keeping his feet there enough to turn that from not a whole lot to a pretty decent gain, didn't he? Just short of the first. First two or three plays, UT has had two positive. Looks like they're they're got a shot at picking up the first down. That's third and one, so we'll see if Allman guesses right here. Split backs, pro formation to the right, straight dive. Good hard run by Matt Harris across the 30, out to about the 33 yard line, and it's a first down for UT. Ryan Woods then on that tackle for the Pioneers. No. Well, to draw first blood as far as first downs. Huh? Well, and that's key. You know, UT needs to keep possession of that ball. And Moline has proven that and this year in this league, you keep possession of that football, good things can happen to you. Outside dive. Harris again on the carry. Stopped at about the 35-yard line. Mark it up to about the 36, Brian. Yeah, we got Chris Edwards and, and Barry both just met him real quick there. Nice plays there for all of them that time. Brian Kendall, number one, brings a play in the ball game. Coming out is Ben Fagerland. See what the Panthers are going to do here formation-wise. They took out a tight end and put in another wide receiver. But they got Steve Lopez at tight end. They got three receivers to this side, uh, to the right side of the formation. Lemon on the sweep. Got some good blocking out in front. Lemon turns the corner, goes out of bounds at about the 41-yard line. And he's ran out by number nine, Matt Franks. But he got a pretty good gain. About seven, eight yards on that. Well, UT went a little end over that time and had uh, two wide outs and a tight end to what would be the right side of the formation. It's away from our camera. And again, tonight we may be. We're on what to you is the far side of the field, you folks watching the, the ball game. <laughs> How's everything going, John? <laughs> okay. Third and two. Quarterback sneak. Oh. Quarterback sneak. We got a penalty flag down. Yes, we do. Every week. Every week we got them out there. This will be a difficult play. Motion. Looks like we. All right. We're back. How's that working up there? Is that working better? We're having a little technical difficulties here, but I think we're okay now, Brian. Motion. Uh, that went from being a first down on a nice quarterback sneak. That's to uh, a big play big there. Big play. Big mistake. Now we're back to about third and about eight. Third and eight. So it makes Perfect. this game so hard. Eleven men have to all do their job. All at the same time. You betcha. See what the Panthers are call here. Coach Tracy's got the play in. I think we'll throw our first pass Douglas here. Douglas coming across the formation. Pass in the flat. Lemons wide open. Nice pass from Freeman. First down Panthers across midfield and out of bounds at about the Alleman 45-yard line. And he's hauled down by Matt Rowetter. Well, you know, there's we got to see a little change there, you know, with uh, uh, Mike throwing the ball to Lemon. Right. We also found a receiver there in the backfield that's got pretty good hands Lemon's and did a good job of handling that ball. Ryan's got good hands, good receiver, ran a really nice route that time. They cleared out the flat and the Panthers are off and moving now. High backfield formations, two receivers to the left, motion across to Ryan Kendall. Head full back inside trap. trap. You bet. Ooh, one step away that time for Matt Harris. Ryan Woods with a shoestring tackle there to save that. Well, the Panthers got a lot bigger, Brian, with this backfield. We're putting Ryan Lemon in there at tailback. Ryan's 198 pounder. Ron Drew has been starting there. He's only 159 pounds. Of course, Harris is 216. And uh, Freeman, of course, Mike Freeman as a junior, 6'2", 176 pounder, doing a nice job leading this drive. Outside veer dive, straight through. It's Lemon again. Lemon out across. the, the uh, Might be right near the 30 yard line. Mark that thing right at about the 31 yard line. Another first down for the Panthers. That's Brian Arnold got a piece of that tackle. The other Pioneers. Thing you talk about too, Brian, is o overcoming obstacles. The Panthers uh, were able to overcome that five yard penalty, and Allman in their first possession 
were not able to overcome that. So it's first down for UT. Pro set to the right, split backs. Outside veer dive again, nowhere to run this time, but still good leg drive by Matt Harris. Barry on the bottom of that pile. Boy, I tightened up that time. He sure did. Well, they're getting down there where they got to get a little tougher here. They got Barry playing linebacker. Brian, is that where he's coming mm -hmm. from there? Yeah. Barry and Arnold, okay. the linebacker there. I haven't had a chance to look at their defense. They still playing that 50 or are they running a six man front right now? Well, it was a 50. Now we'll see what they do this time. Yeah, 50 again. Yep. Yep. Two wide receivers to the left. I formation this time. Freeman. See the big change is Healy's out here in the outside linebacker right. spot where Sprint he was pass. on the inside. Wide open in the flat. Nice catch. Steve Lopez, number 89, made a nice catch. And I think we ought to mention something, Brian. His dad, Steve's dad, number mm -hmm. 89's dad, Mike, is 60 years old today. Is that right? That's amazing. And, that uh, is. That's and, great. And he was our mailman in our neighborhood for years until he retired. And I just thought he did a good job, but I, I discovered that after checking it real close, he always got there pretty early in the day. But I discovered he, we were getting Wednesdays a mail on Friday. Uh -oh. So maybe he was, you know, two days late and a dollar well, short. Well, his timing might have been timing a little off. Timing was just a little off. Yeah. Happy birthday, Mike Lopez. Steve made a nice catch there. Third down and four for the Panthers. Duran in motion across the formation. Option. Freeman on a good carry that time across. And I think he's got the first down. That was a nice run. A big play there. Showed a lot and of points. I, didn't get, I think maybe Brian Arnold was in on that tackle. I'm not sure that time. They showed a lot of poise on that one, I'll tell you that. First and ten Panthers. Ball is at the Alleman 20-yard line. First and ten. Pioneers gradually giving up their run out of turf here. Well, the Panthers started their own 20. They've moved the ball all the way to the Alleman 20. There's five minutes, 49 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Two wide receivers to this side, to the, to the right of the formation. Stuck in the backfield again. Very nice play that time by Ryan Wood, who yeah. really covered that up, and, and 25, Darren Lavery, come up in there and filled her up good. Looks like that uh, that Oliman's doing a lot of slanting and stuff with those people up front, but it, it, up until that play, most of the tackles being made by linebackers. So if you can get those linebackers, you figure you're doing a pretty good job most of the time. But a second and 11 now for the Panthers. Kendall in motion across the formation. Option, quarterback keeps. Freeman makes a nice run down to about the 18-yard line. Turned that ball up, took it to the 18-yard line. Brian Arnold got a piece of that tackle. Sets up another big down play, Brian. Third down and about seven. The ball located at the Alleman 17-yard line. Remember, you got Terrence Clark over there on that, that sideline warming up for a field goal, so that the Panthers are in field goal range. That looks scary that time, Coach, because... If uh, Mike looks out there, he's got the pitch man wide open. Well, and the other thing is, too, is there was nobody on the quarterback at all that time. So uh, a lot of gambling going on right now by the Alleman defense, and that could help you or hurt you here. Pass, flood to the flat. Oh, pressure, look out. <laughs> oh, my. Chris Edwards oh. come crashing in there. Big Defensive hit. end and really put it on him. Big hit. Adam Stimson, number 60, was in there pretty close to that one, too. And UT's going to try a field goal, Brian. We'll see what we have here now. It's going to be fourth and about 13. Hey, the Pioneers came through. They, they shipped sure it up and did what they had to do here. Steve Lopez is going to be the holder here. Our snapper up inside is number 25. That's Ernie Jack. Does a nice job. Terrence Clark, the kicker. He's going to kick from the 32-yard line. This will be a 42-yard field goal, Brian. What little wind we have is kind of a crosswind tonight. So the we'll secret see. is, can they get the snap, the hold, and the kick all three time together? And protect. They got high snap. High snap. That kick Kick's is not, not going to make, make it. Oh, no. my. Just a little bit wide. Oh, we got a flag. Wait a minute. We got a flag. A penalty flag back here. So It's right by where the kicker was. I don't know what happened. Roughing the kicker against Oliver and Brian. Oh, a huge my, break my, for the Panthers. my. Huge break. The field goal by Clark was just short and a little bit wide to the left. But UT's going to get an automatic first down here. I guess we both went like this with the we, ball. I wasn't <laughs> I watching. missed it. I did, too. I did, too. Well, we know the Panthers don't need the tee right now because it's going to be first down. Is that automatic first down, I isn't know, it? I think it is. It is for in, in the punting situation. 
Yeah. We'll have to see here. I'm not sure if it is or not. Rough in the kicker. First down. Yes. I thought it was, but right. I wasn't sure. Well, sometimes they change the rules on us, Brian, and they don't tell us. Never during the game, though. <laughs> no. Well, I've coached games where I think they've changed the rules <laughs> in the middle before. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I'm sure well, you Well, UT have. gets a nice break here. The ball's at the uh, Alleman 12-yard line. First and 10. Big well, they, break. First down every time Matt Harris has been getting the ball, and I think Alleman's starting to get on to that. What do you think is going to happen this Split time? backs. I think we're going to go. Panthers are going to go outside this time. Outside Veer. Ooh. How about that? Ryan Lemon. Ryan Lemon Big to the game. goal line, about the one-yard line. Falls and bounces to the goal line, but I think they're going to mark it just short of the goal line. Another first down for the Panthers. First and goal inside the one. Well, Ryan Lemon is a good-looking running back. Oh, he, he, he was is. leaning forward, had that weight forward, yeah. and he well, was going to get positive yardage one way or another. And he brings 198 pounds with him when he comes up in there with some good quickness. So uh, and I'm sure he's enjoying this ball game. He likes being a running back. The combination of him and Harris gives a couple pretty strong running backs Boy, for running for inside. Sure. That's for sure. Brian Moons at center comes up over the ball. Alleman shifts down into the gaps. Outside Veer, but no place to run. Panthers going to lose a couple yards there. Alleman appears to be mm. a little stronger mm. On their defensive right side. Tony DeJulio, number 88, had both legs right there. That was a nice play. Nice play. One of the big factors, UT has not fumbled the ball in these situations. Several times the backs are getting hit just about the time the ball is getting handed to them. So they're holding on. But that ball's on the two-yard line. Loss of two, almost two full yards. Two minutes, 56 seconds to go. I'm going to bet they come back here to the right side. That's sweep to Lemon. Breaks it up inside, dives in. Touchdown, Panthers. A quick sweep right. The fullback went left, and I'm and maybe that's exactly what you want to do on that one. But but well, he had one man to beat, and he made a beautiful cut and beat him. Right. Well, and then you get 198 pounds with your head down, and you only need a yard. It's pretty hard. to Once he uh, beat him, he was going. Right. Wasn't he? <laughs> you go low, he's going to go right over the top. You stay high, you get run over. And so with 247 to go here in the first a quarter, the Panthers are on the scoreboard first on a nice 80-yard drive, aided by a roughing. The uh, kicker penalty on a field goal, missed field goal by Terrence Clark. Extra Better point. snap. Kick is up and the kick is? Good. Good, and UT leads 7-0, and we're in the first quarter. Brian, I tell you, a reminder, our folks, our big, uh, our, I guess our major sponsor, that is Independent Insurance Services Incorporated on Locust Street in Davenport, um, are bringing you this ball game along with their other sponsors. We're going to take a short break. He'll be right back with you in just a moment. <laughs> we're ready to, for the kickoff, Brian. We're back here now. Yes, we are. Panthers kickoff again. Each team has had the ball one time. UT used it most of that quarter to take that ball down the field, but with two minutes, 47 seconds to go, and UT leading 7-0, Terrence Clark will kick off. Got Healy back and Ryan Ekstrom back for the Pioneers. Deep kick. Looks like Healy's going to get the ball. That's their speed, man. That's their speed, man. Boy, Panthers are there, though. Nice play. Brian Kendall, number one, is in on that one big time. Matt Harris is there. Ron Drew. Well, the, the two ball games that we've got to cover the Pioneers, we know Healy's an excellent runner, right. but he's just not getting an opportunity to run very much. I mean, it's, it's hard to get him. Everybody's keying on him, it seems like. Well, and, you know, and we'd be remiss if we didn't mention how many great players. We did in the pregame a little bit. How many great players Alman graduated. And uh, they're hard to replace. There's some young linemen in there, and they're going to get better. But right now, Healy isn't having much, much uh, space to run. There's a fumble on the ball ground. on the ground. See what happened here. Oh, UT ball. Who's got that thing under there? Right on top of it, Matt Harris. Harris. Matt Harris recovers at the Alleman 18-yard line. Oh, boy. That's bad turnover there. That was a straight dive, Brian. Mm -hmm. and, and he actually had about a two, three-yard gain, look like. But bang. That's going to put that ball 20, let's put a 23, 24 yard line. I didn't get, was it Matt Harris that hit him? Somebody's stuck him pretty yeah, good there. I'm not sure, I didn't see that. They got a pro set for the Panthers, two receivers to the left side, split backs. This time Mike Hancock in the ball game, and Hancock gets the, the handoff, drives up towards the 20 yard line. Hancock splitting time at fullback with Matt Harris. Both 60 and 62, uh, John Arnold and Adam Stimson was in on that tackle. Hancock's a 5'11", 192-pound senior. Uh, he and Matt Harris. Harris is 6'1", 216. So they bring a load. Both, both of them bring a load with them when they get up in there. Lemon is still a tailback. Mike Freeman a quarterback. 
Hancock to carry again out to about the 20 yard line. We'll take a quick look at that Panther offensive line. We get that group in there. Number 50 is Josh Tyrannis. I see him out there. 76 is Kevin Ward. Brian Moons, number 51, is the center. Get you that left guard, left tackle here as soon as the Panthers come out of the huddle. That line, obviously in that first drive, that group did an outstanding job, Brian. Panthers need a uh -oh. either equipment problem. Well, oh, UT, UT calls UT. timeout. 71, David Freeman's at left tackle, and number 60, Sean Keller is at left guard. The UT takes a timeout, and I think it was either a formation problem or something, Brian. But let's take a, again, take a short break here, give our sponsors a chance to share some time with you. 137 to go. Panthers lead 7 0. Trick or treat, trick or treat. What do you just mix all this stuff together? <laughs> yeah. I want back in three, two, one. We're back. Well, we're back here at Almquist Field. It's Jim Sanders with Brian Mumma. We're in the first quarter of the Panthers and the Pioneers. Third and about eight for UT. Double wing this time. Hancock in motion. Pass. Pass. Lemon in the seam. Almost picked off out there. Lemon played a little defense there, Coach. Yep. Yep. Good DBs are able to do that. Nice defensive secondary play out there. And the Panthers may be a field goal situation again here. Here comes Clark and, and his, his buddies. Well, all of them made a few adjustments and stiffened up there. Yes, they sure did. That, they, if they can get away with three points even, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a big uh, morale booster, I'll tell you. Again, Jack will be the, uh, the snap. Ernie Jack, Steve Lopez to hold, and Terrence Clark gets it all. The He's kick is up, and the kick good. is good, oh and the goodness. Panthers lead 10-0 with 1.28 to go in the first quarter. So it's kind of a good and bad. It's a, the Panthers did get three points out of it, but Pioneers held tight right there when they give that ball up. That was about a 38-yard field goal that time by Terrence Clark, and he had plenty of leg in that one right oh, down yeah. the middle. But the Pioneers are close on them, aren't they? And you bet. Now they're coming from the outside. It's hard to block that thing from the outside, though, just without landing on the holder or somebody. Well, UT's uh, kickoff team's getting ready to go out there. Some faces that we haven't seen uh, so far. I'm going to get you a guy or two that hasn't been on regular defense. Sylvester Banks is number 30. He's out there. Uh, number 90 is, 90 is Brian Stone. He'll be running down under this kick. Outside, Ron Drew, number two. Everybody else, I think, are guys that uh, we've already talked about a little bit here. Clark, I tell you what, that's a that's a nice weapon to have. Mm -hmm. Booms through the extra point to give the Panthers seven and fouls it up with a, a what did we say that thing was? About a 30. Well, he kicked it from a 37-yard field goal. Excuse me. <laughs> You're the only guy I know that gets phone calls here in the booth. Brian will be right back. Hello. Kickoff comes down to about yeah. the 15-yard line. Yes, sir. Oh, it might go. Healy breaks it to the 40-yard line. I'm in the football booth there. We're brought to Healy takes that ball back to about the 40-yard line, and Alleman's going to take over here. I don't know. I, I took a shower. I did everything I'm supposed to do, but the phone rings and Brian leaves, so I'm here by myself. So he'll be he'll be right back. Ruthie, a quarterback. Pioneers, two wide receivers, rights. Option right, Ruthie with the ball, pitches outside. Healy turns the corner to the midfield to about the 49-yard line of the Panthers. Healy on a nice run that time. Ruthie that time held the ball the last second, made a nice pitch. And as we talked in the pregame, it's important that Healy gets some, some running room to the outside. First down for Alleman, 113 to go in the first quarter. A little more zip coming out of the huddle right now by Alleman. I formation, two wide receivers to the left. Balls at the Panther, 49 yard line, dump pass. Down the seam, wide open, great catch. Number 80 is, is uh, Ryan Wood. Ryan's 6'5 and 205 pound senior. And immediately Alleman is on the Panther 34 yard line. It looks like the Pioneers have uh, received the wake-up call. It took them until about two minutes to go here in the first quarter. But Alleman is live and kicking right now and getting close to knocking on that door. I formation, tight end right. 
fullback trap inside. Barry on the carry inside the 30 to about the 28 yard line of the Panthers. Barry's made a nice run that time. Took that ball down inside. They're going to mark that at the 34. That's not the 34 yard line, it's the 29 yard line. Second and five. Oh, kind of a little counter play, but nowhere to run that time. Stacked up at about the 30 yard line. The 33, Healy was on that carry. Brian, you're back. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. I'll take Alleman on down the field, or you take UT this time on the All defense. Right. And that's the end of the first quarter. So we will have time to think about this a little bit. Brian is back from his phone call, which is pretty neat. It's nice to know you have friends in high places. We're going to take a short break here at the end of the first quarter. The Panthers lead the Pioneers 10-0. Well, that's the way. Two, one, we're back. Well, we're back here, start of the second quarter. This is Jim Sanders with Brian Mumma. If you joined us late, the Panthers scored on a nice 80-yard drive for a, uh, the, the, uh, for a touchdown, helped out by a roughing the kicker penalty on a missed field goal, and then followed the Dolman turnover with another field goal. Ruthie on a quick pass inside, nice completion. The, the receiver kind of turned back. He's around the 23 or four yard line. We'll see where that went. Trying to figure who the receiver was that time, Brian. It's gonna be third and short. No, first, that, no, first down. Oh, they gave him the first down? Yep. Seth Taranis. Taranis on that catch. Nice curl in pattern out there. Put him right in the way. And, and Ruthie's throwing the ball real well on this drive. So mark it first down. The Panther 23-yard line. First and 10 for the Pioneers. Outside handoff. Barry on the carry. Panthers are balls oh, loose. Balls loose balls again. Loose again. Panthers say they've got it. Nobody in the striped shirt said anything yet. UT ball on a fumble recovery, and Alleman turns the ball over again. Up front there for Alleman, uh, Chris Edwards, uh, John Kearney, John Arnold, uh, Nate Polish, and Ryan Wood. Okay. I'll tell you, they were doing a nice job there, and the alignment can't do anything with a, with a fumble. So 11.23 to go. There's another big play in this ball game, Brian. The Panthers take over on their own 23-yard line, first and 10. There's two turnovers now, right? Yep. Matt Harris on the carry, takes it out to about the 25-yard line. Good offensive line blocking in there by the Panthers. They've still got that same line coming off there in a hurry. You know, I'll tell you, sometimes you play a team like Moline and the way they come off the football, and you have to sit there all week and watch those guys do good against you, and all of a sudden you say, I think I, I, think I can do that. And, I, you know, again, different opposition. I understand that. But the UT line this week appears to be coming off the ball a lot better than they did last week. A lot more zip coming out that, out that line. Wishbone by the Panthers this time. Well, Terrence Clark's in the backfield. Running Hancock. wide. Hancock can't turn the corner. Terrence Clark was in there as one of the running backs. Ryan Wood just chased him down and got enough of his shoulder pad there from behind that he wasn't going to let him go anywhere. Did a nice job. Well, UT went to the wishbone a little bit last week against Moline. This time they, they went with uh, uh, Terrence Clark as one of the running backs with Harris at fullback and Hancock. So he used uh, a little different look back there and giving Ryan Lemon a little bit of a rest right now. Panthers are going to come out with the same personnel but go double wing. The lone back behind Freeman. Counter coming back. Terrence Clark breaks out across the 30. Good oh, what a cut. To the 40. There's good a good block. block. He may go. He's to the 40. Got one man to beat. To the 30. He may go all the way. Terrence Clark. There are no flags on the field. Panthers score. Terrence Clark. Oh, man. My gracious. A tremendous cut right here in front of us at the 45-yard line to set that up. And then he has one man to beat. And he showed some strength as to run through that tackle as the man tried to tackle him. Well, he did a good job because he stayed far enough inbounds for our, our young people. You got a better look on that side than we did because the camera's over there. But he was well within the, uh, the boundary. So when he did get bumped there, it didn't knock him out of bounds. But Clark goes 80 yards, and the Panthers lead 16-0. 
Long strike that time. Panthers have had an 80 yard drive and now an 80 yard run. Two 80 yard drives here. Two different ways to do that. Clark on the kick after an 80 good. yard run. And it is good. And the Panthers lead 17 0 and threaten to break this thing wide open here at Omquist Field. How about that, Brian? Oh my, I tell you, uh, Terrence Clark's quite a quite a body run in there, you know. Well, Terrence He's six foot, 184 pounds, and once he got through that line and come out that back, he looked like the big kids playing with the little kids. He I sure mean, he, did. he looked strong, didn't he? Well, he high stepped a little bit. He 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 made a great cut and. Uh, Number 89 that time, Steve Lopez peeled back and waited perfect timing for the Alleman defender to turn. Clark set the block up. Lopez makes the block and he's gone. Excellent effort down there that time by Alleman. Uh, Tom Huppert made a great effort to bring Clark down, but Clark wasn't going to be stopped that time. And boy, oh boy, UT is looking sharp tonight. You know, it'd been easy for Lopez to watch that play about that time, and he did. He was really a football player to turn there and get that last block yes, for he him. Was. Well, here we go. We got Healy back. Along with Ekstrom. Run for an 80 yard touchdown and kick an extra point. We got any, anything left here. It's going to be more of a squib kick this time. Rolling down inside the uh, 15 yard line. Good coverage by the Panthers. Great coverage. Number 81 that time was Pete Doklas. And he pinned that, that running back to the boundary. Number 60. Uh, Sean Keller with a nice tackle there. Good job. <coughs> Sean's a neat kid. Let's take a look at that Panther defense now. We talked about them in the opening, but at nose guard, you got number 45. That's Ricardo Harris. The D tackles are Kevin Ward, number 70. Excuse me, go back a little bit. Brian Inman, 75. And on this series, David Freeman's number 71. The two defensive ends, number 63, is Scott DeFreeze. On the far side, Ben Fagerlin is number 83. Your linebackers are Harris and Hancock. The difference is Inman's lined up at a D tackle tonight. Right. Well, Harris played well right enough now. last last week, I think, in that ball game against Moline, and he, you know, he's a tough young man. He's a tough young man. While well, we got a penalty here, well, I think he saves somebody from having to go both ways now. I'm sure, it does. Another player. Well, Moons you know. was Moons has been playing in there, and then <laughs> that allowed Inman to play on the nose, and Moons was playing D tackle, and he's kind of nursing a sprained ankle. Actually, he's had a bad ankle the whole season, but. Uh, uh, that allows them to do that. The Panther secondary to finish out this group. Number one is Brian Kendall. Number 11 is Cody Duran. Ryan Lemon is number 15. And number 22 is Mike Rickey. And those Panther defenders are pitching a shutout right now. Little baseball term there. Did you catch yeah. that one there, Brian? It's, it's, it's oh, inside trap stuff. there. That's a good looking play. So Darren Lavery on that carry. Nice we got run. a different running back in there. Yeah. I was still looking for Healy's yeah. number. Yeah. Did a nice job there. Yeah, he came off. He came up in there, stayed low, and stayed behind his blockers. Did a nice job. Isolate a little bit on Ricardo Harris uh, over the center now. Harris number 45. We'll see how he does here. Stands the center up, runs the football. Pat Panthers Martinez. are there. Oh, Ricky makes a nice tackle at the boundary. Pat Martinez on this carry. As Alleman's got a new backfield in there running the ball. Well, you can only lay the ball on the ground so many times, Brian, before you got to put somebody else in there for a minute or two, kind of get the other young man relaxed and calmed down. And, of course, both the running backs for Alleman, uh, Healy and Barry, play defense full time. So they're, they may be pretty tired right now. Well, you got to believe we're going to see a pass here maybe. Third and five. Ball's at the 30-yard line. Healy back to – or uh, Aubrey back to pass. A little bumping going on out here. Oh. A little bit more bumping, but that's incomplete. Coaches want a little penalty flag there, but. Well, there's a little contact there. They were both looking for the ball, though. Well, the initial contact occurred when the Alleman player ran into the defender. That, I mean, that, that was the initial contact. And I'm not so sure that ball was catchable. It was, it was definitely out of bounds. Maybe that's what the officials called. But that's bad news for Alleman. That sets yeah. up fourth down, fourth and five. Well, if it happened in front of my bench, I'd have wanted to call. Oh, I, I agree with huh? you. No question about I, that. You might have said. I hey, wasn't said, that are you sure about that, sir? Yeah. A little yeah. fake there, like uh -huh. they were going to fake the punt. Well, Duran may get a chance to run this. Cody picks it up and it's nailed oh. immediately. He's inside the 30 yard line. Great tackle by Chris Edwards right down there. And he caught him right yes, now. Yes, he did. A gutsy, gutsy play that time. Cody Duran, 5'8, 151 pound senior, took that ball on one hop and tried to make something of it. 
Well, he might have saved them about eight, ten yards there. He that could've. ball could have taken off rolling, you know. Yeah, the ground's getting a little harder now as we get yeah. towards uh, fall and heading towards a uh, little cooler temperatures here. Well, it's a great night tonight, though, Brian. Oh, yes. My gracious. Really it's nice not, out here, isn't it? No, there no, no wind. Absolutely no wind. 8.54 to go. Panthers up by 17. Sweep. Ron Drew on the carry this time. Out across the 30 to about the 32-yard line, almost to 33. Ron Drew in his first action in the backfield. John Kearney on that tackle for the Pioneers. Well, the Panthers have used several ball carriers this time through. Steve Lopez helmet is. Seems like all the teams are using a lot of running backs the last few years here more and more and that's good you know. Well you know really it's a long season. Uh, this is a tough league. I don't care what anybody says. I, you know if you've played anybody out of the Western Big Six you go get hit. You go get hit for four quarters every week. And so it's it's tough to be a running back in this league. Straight dive, hard in there. Nice run by Ron Drew again that time. And again, the fresh legs. Last series, uh, Terrence Clark had the fresh legs. This time, Ron Drew is in there. Coach Tracy and his staff doing an excellent job of keeping those those runners up in there fresh. And Allman's got a lot of kids going both ways right now, and they they got to be getting a little bit tired on defense. So we're looking at third and about three. It's a big play right now for the Panthers if they can. Uh, if they can convert here and get a first down, it puts Allman, you know, back on their heels again. End over this time. Panthers going unbalanced to, to, towards the camera side. To the right. Sprint pass. Open in the flat. Dokla. No, excuse me. Great. Brian Kendall on a nice catch and knocked out of bounds. We'll see where they mark that ball. Knocked out of bounds by Healy over there on the side. He was open. He did a nice job of throwing the ball. Nice job of catching it there. That's first down. You know, right now, Allman needs a timeout. Now, that's a dimension that UT's added this week that, that we hadn't seen. That, that, that So far, their execution and their pass plays have been pretty pretty clean looking. Real clean. Excellent. Mike Freeman's doing a great job throwing the ball on the run. Allman does get a timeout here with 7 minutes, 39 seconds to go. They need to talk this over. The Panthers that time went with a flood route. After going to an unbalanced line, they ran the end over, putting three quick receivers out there. And what do you say about that, Bryant? Well, I think it's time to take a short break here with the timeout. Good. We're back. Well, the Pioneers need to stop here, Coach. There's no doubt about it. This is getting the point of the game where they just can't give up another drive right here before halftime. Yep. Absolutely right. UT might be offside. I think we lined up offside out here, Brian. Right in front of our position. Yeah, we could see right down the line that time. You don't think that Allman coach was pointing it out to that <laughs> linesgeeper there, do you? Uh, all I know is that he was tugging on the back of the referee, the, the uh, official's pants there, so I think they got their attention, but UT draws a five-yard penalty. We want to also thank the Allman administration, Larry Schulte, and the athletic department administration here at Allman. They put us in the catbird seat. I'll tell you what, when we go to Moline, we're sitting right there at about the 48-yard line. You've got to be sitting on about the 46- or 7-yard line right here. Perfect conditions. Yeah, we want to thank everybody. They've been really nice to us at all these Straight dive places. coming through. Oh, that's Harris still churning those legs out nice across job. the 45, out to about the 48-yard line. Picked up a big chunk of what the Panthers lost and, and then some on that penalty. Number nine, Matt Franks at the bottom of that play for the Pioneers. You know, Panthers lost five on the penalty. We picked up ten on the run by Matt Harris. So it's second down, let's say four, uh, nine yards on the carry. So it's second down about six, 7.14 to go. Panthers ready to move that ball again into Alleman territory. Two wide receivers to the left, split backs, Drew and Harris. Mike Freeman at quarterback. Duran in motion. Dump down the seam. Oh, it's tipped. Healy picks it off. Allman turned the other way, and he's got some room. Brings it up to about the 46-yard line before he's tackled there. Freeman, uh, Brian, made a great decision there, and the receiver was wide open, and the ball just got tipped somewhere on the way, and, man, Healy went to that ball in a hurry. Well, that's just what the Pioneers needed was a break right here you to bet. kind of even this ball game out and give them a chance to turn this thing around before halftime. They got a chance to move the ball. They got great field position here. They need to move the ball this time. Well, they do, and, and they got to hang on to the ball. You know, they've moved it a couple times, not real well, but they've moved it a little bit, but they also had trouble hanging on to it. Now we got a good view here, looking right down the line of scrimmage. 
Motion in the backfield that time by Alleman. UT moved, but they weren't offside, and the running back from Alleman moved early. Shoots so again, the before they even get started, they're going to be down five yards. Well, you know what the theme of the game was? The teams had to do what? That root hog or die? That's right. So far, the Panthers are much better root hogs. Well, you know, it's kind of like in tennis when you serve the ball out of bounds. They call it unforced error. Right. And right. the Pioneers have had several of those here in the first really half. Really have. Really have. They've hurt themselves there. Mm -hmm. Well, and you, you know, your your season is going to a point where you are struggling a little bit. You've played some very good teams and lost some games, cl fairly close games. But, I mean, you can't do this against good football teams. Ruthie's pass. Oh, oh nice oh, catch. Great catch. Look out. Was that Lemon that tipped that or? or uh... Cody Duran was in there. Lemon was both, both of them were right there uh, around that ball. Ryan Ekstrom, was that 31 on that catch, Brian? Sure, I think it was extra. Yep. I tell you, that tip, and he kept the concentration and hauled that thing in, <laughs> and sure Darner got away with it well, for the touchdown. Don't look now, but it's 17-0 with 6.32 to go. The Pioneers are at the Panther 31-yard line. They're on the move. Oh, no, not this my. play. Ricardo Harris, number 45, right in the middle of that. DeFreeze is in the middle of that one, and Hancock. Pat Nowhere Martinez didn't even get a chance that time. He got the ball, and two guys hit him right then. Well, I'll tell you what, you like some, well, don't some defensive line play right now. Take a look at the Panthers' defensive line. Freeman's doing a good job. That's David Freeman. Uh, Ricardo Harris at nose guard. Brian Emman at D-tackle. They're coming off that ball in a hurry. In the seam, officials, there's your penalty flag that the Alleman people have been waiting for. Yeah, a little pass interference looks like. Well, that's going to be a big play because that'll put uh, be a first down. And I tell you, the receiver did a beautiful job of putting himself between the, the ball and the defender. The defender had no choice but to go through him to get to that football. Otherwise, it's a completed pass. So, you know, a good throw by Ruthie and a, a nice route that time by the receiver. And that's going to be a first down for Alleman. Now the ball is at the Panther 18-yard line. Well, this is the Pioneers' biggest chance to score now. They're right down in there, and they need to put this one in the end zone and put themselves back in this ball game before halftime. Exactly right. Speed option by Alleman. No place to run Ruthie here. hanging on. Panthers all over that play. 31 that time. Matt Harris did a great job. But they, they ran that, that play into the short side of the field, and the Panthers just strung that thing out. There was no chance. When you go speed option into the short side, you got people covered in a real big hurry. Well, that's not what we needed on first and ten there. No, no. Pioneers are knock right down there knocking. Now they need to come back with a play here that's going to put them back in this. And I would look again for maybe Ryan Wood on something, either this play or the next play. Right. Well, they've got him isolated out there on Mike Ricky. Let's just see what happens. Quick, Quick screen. screen. Oh, nice play out there that time. Mike Ricky made a nice hit on that. Uh, Pat Martinez uh, with the catch and the carry that time, and he yeah. got he Ricky, got a few yards back. Ricky's hurt. He he's had a stinger of one of those little shoulder injuries where if you play a little football and you actually hit anybody. Now, Brian, I never had that injury, so you probably did. You were uh, well, you didn't have one either. Well, I didn't have one of those stingers. One of the big hitters hit people, and it kind of runs down your arm, kind of like hitting your crazy bone, but. Uh, Mike's been been hurt a little bit with that, and it's become kind of a chronic thing for him right now. So hopefully, they'll take care of that in a hurry. We probably want to take a short break as the training staff from UT comes out to to work always, on him. But I carried M and M's on me, and yeah. I tried to make friends with the guy across from me early. Oh, I see. And if you you know you build a relationship, you get talking and that, and yeah. I lean on him, he leaned on me, and we didn't have any troubles and. Went pretty good. Well, the closest I ever came to a stinger was when the guy <laughs> hit me once <laughs> and, and did it to himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the closest I've been. Well, let's, let's take a short break. We'll be right back. I don't know. I keep looking for something there. Three, two, one. We're back. All right. Come on, Pioneers. You need a big play right here. The third down 11 play. Ruthie, you're going to throw the ball. Oh, oh it's picked right off by Lemon. Lemon to about the 20-yard line on the return. That was exactly the same pickoff as happened to UT back up here at yep. the other end. Well, Ryan Lemon ended up being the primary receiver. He's wide yep. open. 
He's wide open. Well, I'm sure, you know, they've run that play about three times now, and if you're Ryan Lemon, you're looking for that now. Right. Well, they're trying to work the Panthers so that as they adjust the secondary and pre-rotate and or rotate, Ryan Lemon will end up in center field once in a while on that one, and, and he was in the right place at the right time, and UT takes over. Take a look at that backfield. They're going to go with Hancock and Ron Drew out of the I formation. Inside run by Hancock just across the 20 to about the 21 yard line. Barry on that tackle. And him by the feet there and Panthers only got about two yards on that as Pioneers are stiff. You know, you take away the first drive by the Pioneers and they really haven't moved the ball that much since then. And the Pan Pioneers are the, Pan or the Panthers, I mean. Right, right. Yeah, the 180 yard run. Yeah, the, really. And the, well, yeah, the big run. The big but run. As You're far exactly as a long right. drive or the anything. Turnovers, all of them and turnovers have helped. Now, if UT can take this in the last 441 and go 80 yards again, look out. We're going to throw Pass. the ball. Little overthrown that time. That's a tough run. He's being pressured that time. Boy, and, that's uh, tough to be accurate like that. Uh, you know, when you're on the dead run. Well, and one thing about it, you know, the thing you like about that is realizing the pressure's there, realizing your receiver's covered. Uh, Freeman just threw that ball out over his head, and uh, and he'll, he'll try it. Well, the down. nice thing about that play, it's it's usually if he throws it high like that, either your man's going to get it or nobody's going to get right. it. Well, third down, he's had lots of receivers open on that far sideline over there. All those white shirts were wide open over there. I see Clarence, uh, Terrence Clark. Terrence Clark's back in the ball game. You don't think yep. he's going to get the ball, yeah, He do might you? get it again right here. Comes up short of the first down on a little inside counter by the Panthers. Brings the ball out across the 25-yard line, out to about the 27, but it sets up a fourth down and two, and UT's going to punt that ball away with 420 to go here in the second quarter. Well, he got a pretty good gain on that run. He did. And again, it's a difference of six, seven yards in the field position game. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. Clark will be doing the punting. Ernie Jack will be doing the snapping. It's, whoa. That was close. Healy's going to get this ball. Ron and he's got, he's got a wall over here. If he can get over here. Oh, now he <laughs> went the other way. That's no wall over there. All the white shirts went Ooh. that way. Number 40, number 50, and on the tackle for the Panthers that time, Josh Chiranas, number 50, and Mike Hancock, number 40, covered him up at about the 30, or about the 45-yard line, but good field position for Alleman. So we got 350 left in the first half with the Panthers leading 17 to zip right now, and the Pioneers take over and another opportunity to march it down there. Missed a good opportunity the Pioneers did on that last drive. Yes, they, they did. Moved the ball pretty good, and... Turned it over. Yeah, so we got a penalty coming here. Holding penalty That's against Oliman. Three right. takeaways for the Panthers in this first half. Right, and then they've only turned it up. They're plus two on the giveaway, the giveaway takeaway charts right now, and the score 17-0. So that tells you something, doesn't it? Got to hang on to that ball. Yes, you do. So here comes the Pioneers. They're out of the huddle. Split backs again. Quickly, I was going to say, either Alleman's left guard was the fastest human being off that I've seen, and or he moved just a little bit early. Brian Arnold, number 63, playing linebacker on defense, has been playing center on offense quite a bit tonight. Wow. I'll tell you what, uh, a holding penalty. Alleman takes possession with decent field position, somewhere up, around, up past the 40, and end up holding on the punt return and then having a, a legal procedure on the first down sets up another first and 15. How many times has Alleman started drives tonight? First, first and, and 15. 15. Several, yes. That just has to stop. Yep. If you're going to beat anybody any good, and I'll tell you what, the Panthers are good, you cannot do that. Pass, screen. Screen pass to Healy. He's got a little. Oh, he might go. He could go. There's a big look at Terrence Clark. Terrence Clark. Terrence Clark is not going to get him. He's not going to get him. Touchdown, Pioneers. Oh, big play. Oh, my gosh. A huge play. That finally found a way, Coach, to get Healy the ball yeah. and a chance to run. Exactly. And that's just exactly what he did. And then it'll be a 70 yard touchdown, actually, 69 yard touchdown pass from Ruthie to Healy, and, and he broke loose, and for a second, I thought Terrence Clark was going to catch him. Well, he was gaining on him like mad, but he... <laughs> 
I don't know what happened there. Either one guy ran out of gas or, or the other, other guy one shifted gears. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> we're, we're not sure what, but I'll tell you what, guess who gets to kick the extra point here? Oh, you can run a little faster when somebody's <laughs> chasing you that close. Well, Terrence is probably it's a pretty mean guy. He was probably going to get all over it if he could. Huge play. Good. Pioneers is good. Yeah. And we're looking at 17 to 7, and that is a big turnaround in this ball game. Well, you're absolutely right, right, Brian. The Panthers had things going just the way they wanted. Alleman was self, you know, one. Uh, UT was doing a lot of good things defensively and offensively, and Alleman was getting penalized, fumbling the ball, and everything else. But as it happens in so many games, you're looking here at a 17 7 ball game, and then UT now needs to mount a drive and maybe score some points before half. Well, the momentum's changed now, I think, and, and it's a question of will UT come back and establish yourself, or is Alleman going to take it up a notch now? Exactly right. Exactly right. Well, UT is going to get the ball to start the third quarter. That's a big plus. If UT could mount a drive here, get down, even kick a field goal, and then get the ball to start the third quarter, that would make a big difference. Uh, Timeout-wise, uh, I'm trying to remember if UT has used a timeout. I think maybe they don't think so. Don't well, know. yes, they did early. They yeah, used they, one. I think they yeah, used one they early. used one. So, Panthers have back deep. Ron Drew is back there, along with number 11. That's Cody Duran. The up backs are Sylvester Banks. You got Hancock and Harris are up there, and I would guess that's Terrence Clark. And then Pat Voss kicking off for the Pioneers. Oh, Voss kicked the extra point. Oh, a little pooch oh, kick. They're going to try to take a chance. It's going to go out, out of bounds. bounds. All of them coach tried to kick it back <laughs> in. Did you see that? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. He had the right idea. The Panthers had a little hole out there, about the 30-yard line, but Voss was not able to put it there, and UT is going to take possession of the ball, and it should be. I think they were trying for a turnover right there. I really there. do. I well, think UT they were. runs two deep and four up front, and, and at each 30-yard marker, a pocket there's there, a little pocket right there. It looked like they are trying to pop one up right into that pocket. Just needed that kick to be a little softer there, and, and the race that, would have been on. That's right, and they're hoping that Sylvester Banks, the Panther uh, return man on that side, wouldn't get there, but UT takes over at the 35-yard line. No time ran off the clock. Double wing formation for the Panthers. Terrence Clark's in the backfield. Ryan Lemon. Harris. Option coming this way. Clark's got it. He's out to the 40. To the 45, and his Marked, I guess, inbounds. They didn't stop the clock, so the clock's still running. So Tom Hufford with that tackle for the Pioneers is, again, Terrence Clark shows the pretty good ability to run that ball right there. Officials will stop the clock here and doing a nice job of getting the play in the ball game. Pete Dokla is coming in from the sideline. Coach Trace is getting the plays in in a big hurry. And because of the, of the first down and the clock stopping to move the chains, the Panthers didn't use that much time there at all. Full back inside. Matt Harris. Harris across midfield. Tackle by Ryan Woods and uh, Adam Stenson. Well, three minutes to go. Inside of three minutes, Brian. The Panthers have the ball in the Pioneers territory to get set up for a Terrence Clark field goal. UT's probably going to have to get down around, I would say, in the neighborhood of the 25, 30 yard line, but give them a realistic shot at a field goal here. So about 20 more yards for UT. UT got an interesting combination in backfield in there. Right, Clark again, inside handoff, one ball, oh, nice leg drive and a great tackle. Pretty strong backfield there with uh, Lemon Harris and Clark, all you three betcha. back there. Josh Toronto's number 50 that time for the Panthers, did a nice job, stayed with his block all the way to the end of that run. He's playing at guard right now, right guard. Third down, big third down play. If Allman could, could stop the Panthers here, UT may be forced to punt the ball. The ball's inside the 45 yard line. Motion, full back. Harris, oh, got Harris some go. Out across the 30, down to about the 29 yard line. Clock will stop again as the Panthers get another first down. John Arnold and uh, Woods in on that tackle for the Pioneers. Boy, the Pioneers, I tell you, Panthers are taking big yardage there. The Pioneers need to stiffen it up here now. Yeah, they do. They really do. Moons leads them out of the huddle. Mike Freeman steps in behind. Double wing again. Lemon in motion. Full back with the ball. Not much running room that time. Harris gets stopped quickly. I think there was a reason that play was run. 137. Set up something else, you think? I think so. Yeah. 
Or you figure they're, they're figuring you're going to go outside, you pop one clean, and you run to the goal line. Shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Straight line, yes it is. Clark in motion. Quarterback has it. Squirms forward inside the 20, oh golly, about the 26 yard line maybe. UT is going to need a timeout here. And then UT's got one with 113 to go. Well, UT calls a timeout now. And that ball is at the, well, we're going to mark it at the 27 yard line. So that that's way up. there, they looked a little uncertain of what they were trying to accomplish to me. I'm not sure if, if something was wrong there. Or. Well, Freeman came away from the inside fake, and it was obviously an outside option. They're going to go to the option. But I think as Freeman looked out there, the pitch man was pretty well covered, and he had to find some room to squirm up in there. He stumbled just a little bit. Yeah. And uh, kind of got him, got him off guard. But now Coach Tracy's out there in the middle of the huddle talking to his offensive unit. The defensive coaches for Alleman are out there and they're doing a nice job of talking to their coaches. It's gonna be real interesting here to see what happens. Terrence Clark's coming off the field. I'm trying to check, see who the Panthers have in that backfield. It may dictate what formation they're gonna run a little bit here. They do have Harris in the backfield and uh, Ryan look, Lemon. I'll tell you what I look for here. I look for a little pass to Lemon. Okay. Or, or uh, Lopez. Okay. Well, they're both in the ball game. That gives you a good chance, doesn't it? That Panthers are going to go, it? Gonna go pro set. Going to go to the pro set to the right. Two receivers right. Quarterback keeps it. Out across the 25-yard line. Just inside. It's fourth down. The Panthers are going to go for a long field goal here. 101 going, and time is running. Terrence Clark comes down. We're going to take a quick look at where he sets his tee down. It's going to be about the 30 Two yard line, 33 yard. I call it the 33, Brian. It's 43 yard field goal, no wind. 48 seconds to go. This will be a big boost for the Panthers. Everything's got to work right here when you're for this far out. Oh, line shot, but it's well, long got enough. The ball. Wide left, Brian. Just wide left. Terrence it was hooked definitely it. long. He hooked it. Kind of looked like one of your drives, that, if I remember right. Yes. Long yes, and did. wide left. Long and, and roll and roll. <laughs> roll and roll. Well, let's take a short break with 37 seconds to go here in the first half. UT misses a field goal opportunity, and, and uh, but the Panthers still lead 17-7. We're on. Well, that was interesting. Oh. They, they got themselves down there, had a nice drive, and then just kind of bogged down there that yep. last series. Well, a couple things happened there, Brian, and I don't know, you know, not being in the huddle, not knowing exactly the play call and so forth along the way, but a happen one Alman made the uh, Mike Freeman carry the ball twice on option plays they just took away everything else and made him run with the football and I think that's an adjustment they've got to make uh, uh, Mike's a tough kid and a good quarterback but uh, with all the other good backs UT has he's the one you want to carry it Seth UT jumps off sides with six seconds to go here Alman looks like they're kind of satisfied to run the clock out here a little bit but UT's going to give him a five-yard penalty well, uh, Inman jumped offside that time. So one of the fans wanted me to mention his name tonight, and there was a great opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> kind of stood out on that play. Yeah, I, I bet that happened to me too. But I said, no, not now. <laughs> I don't want you to mention my name well, now. I mean it in a good way. I'm just kidding that. a little bit. I know it. Well, Brian's been a what a three-year starter for the Panthers. Come up yes, as a sophomore and been in there. Alleman does let the clock run out to Brian, which is smart. They're deep in their own territory. Uh, what Quick reaction to the first half as the two teams leave the field. Well, I thought UT, uh, I thought they started off dominating the game and had their opportunity to maybe blow this game wide open. But the Pioneers hung in there, and, and that great screen pass kept this ball game and give them the momentum now that they seem just as fired up as at the beginning, and, and we got a ball game. You better believe it. You better believe it. Well, we're going to uh, pause for halftime here at Almquist Field. It's the home of the Rocks, but tonight it's the home of the Pioneers. We'll be right back, folks. The main win as a daylight away inductee. She has served in numerous capacities at Alleman High School over the years. She presently holds the title of activities director, but also serves as secretary to the athletic department, the booster department, ticket management, and many other odd jobs. While he was a physical education instructor from 1954 to 91, and one of the pioneers of the girls' athletic program. 
She was the first bowling coach, 1973 to 78. The first girls basketball coach, 1975 to 1980. The first tennis coach, 1975 to 76. And the assistant coach of the first arm and softball team. In 1954, she was hired as the first female lower faculty member of all of them. Let's have an extra round of applause for Maureen Flynn. A lot of us didn't see this guy play, but there's a lot here that did see him play. Slow Bounds. She was a member of the of both the Army football and wrestling teams. He won three national games in football and celebrated three victories over city rival Rock Island. Joe was the first person ever elected unanimously to the All Metropolitan Football Team. He earned all store honors in football from the Champaign Urbana Gazette and the Chicago Daily News, along with a selection to the national high school All-American team. He received a scholarship to UCLA and earned three varsity winners in football and five in the rugby. He participated in the 1963 Rose Bowl and was selected to play in the 1963 All-American Bowl. Let's hear it for Joe Bowers. with the great Hispanical League in basketball history of all of us. John Cornelis. John is a member of the Auburn basketball and baseball teams. Well, in both sports. He served as basketball team captain and was voted MVP in 1970. He also earned first team all sport honors from the Chicago Daily News, the Champaign News Gazette, and the Rockford Morning Star, and the Registered Republic. In addition, he was given first team honors on the Quad City Metro Conference All-Star Basketball Team, the Times Democrat All-Western Illinois Big School Basketball Team, the WRC All-Metropolitan Basketball Team, and the All-Quad City Metropolitan Basketball Team. Let's have an nice round of applause for Chad Cornelius. This guy here, under the tutelage of Don Morris, was one of the first to innovate the jump shot. Tom Wigerer. Tom was a person who only went in football, basketball, and baseball at all of them. He was selected as a member of the All-Quad City Basketball Team in 52 and 53, and in All-State Basketball Special Mention in 1953. He was one of the all-time leading scorers in Auburn in high school history with over 1,200 career points. He graduated from Auburn in 1953 and earned a scholarship to Regis College in Denver, Colorado. As a member of the Regis basketball team, Tom earned four varsity letters and scored over 1,300 career points. He was collected as co-captain in his senior year, graduated with a bachelor's degree in 57. Currently residing in Iowa City, Tom Hoover. Our next MD is well known in the Quad City area, Jim Lula. Jim is a member of the Auburn football, basketball, and track teams, earning varsity honors in all three states. He was a tackle on the 1956 undefeated football team and played tackle and was elected co-captain on the 1957 football team. He was selected as a member of the all Quad City, All-Metropolitan, All-Northern Illinois first team football squads. Jim was also given All-State honors in football by the Chicago Daily News, the Chicago Tribune, and the Champaign News Gazette. He graduated from Albany in 58 and earned a four-year athletic scholarship to the University of Notre Dame. 
He graduated from Notre Dame with a bachelor's degree in 62 and a master's degree in 1963. Tell me about it, he's voting Jim Lula. To each and every one of them, we congratulate them and salute them for their great athletic years here at Alleman High School and to continue the celebration. Proud to stop at Alleman High School immediately after tonight's game for the formal induction ceremonies. Once again, congratulations, Alleman Hall of Famers. Man, Brian, we're back. Marcy, we see a little bit of everything that oh, first half, Oh, my huh? gracious. And I think some real important stuff there at the half with uh, that Hall of Fame induction. Uh, hope you're able to pick that up on it's this sound. every year, across. isn't it? It really is. Each of the schools are doing things and honoring the, the, the former athletes and people who have been very influential uh, in the program. And uh, I think it's just wonderful. So congratulations to this. I guess this would be the second class brought in yeah. the Hall of Fame inductions. We were here the first for the first class. We were here for the first class too. So that's wonderful. So congratulations to those. We got the Panthers out in the middle of the field. Kind of took up most of the field here. So Alleman has to kind of run up over on the edge here. But um, what kind of adjustments did you make if you were Alleman, Brian, at halftime? Well, if I'm Alleman, <laughs> I'm not going to start off first and 15 every time, Coach. I mean, that would be the first thing. We've got to collect ourselves and make sure that we're doing our thing correctly is where I would be coming right. from. I agree. Uh, of course, the other side of it then is uh, is how do you how do you win in the trenches? I mean, that's going to be tough. But first you have to, to execute, I right. think. Yeah, you can't shoot yourself in the foot. We talked about that a couple, two or three times. The Panthers now, I think, did probably what they wanted to do in that first half. Uh, and I think part of the game plan was to try to wear Allman down a little bit. We'll see whether that works out. UT used a lot of backs, so they're all all should be fresh. I was a little nervous about the fact that uh, Mike Ricky uh, banged up that shoulder. He's been bothered with that, and that'll put a little bit of a, a change in that defensive secondary. So we'll see how the Panthers adjust to that. But I think Coach Tracy probably just said, hey, let's just keep doing the same old, same old. Uh, UT turned it over once. Uh, but I think we're going to get more of a steady diet of Terrence Clark. I think we're going to see more of him here. Uh, he does certainly give the Panthers that breakaway sp a speed, but you got Hancock and Harris and Ron Drew in there that all kind of fly up in there also. So that's a pretty powerful backfield. And I, I, would, I, I can't go any farther without talking about what a really nice job that Mike Freeman did at quarterback in his first varsity start. Stepped in, did a real, real nice job of, of leading the Panthers down the field. And uh, uh, his first series, they went uh, 80 yards uh, and uh, scored uh, uh, on that particular drive. So, again, each team probably had to make some adjustments in their blocking schemes. Uh, and let's just see how this thing turns out. Well, it'll be interesting to see if uh, Tracy goes with a different offensive set or anything at the beginning of the second. Sometimes he does that. Right. Uh, right. I think regardless of what he comes out with, I would look for him to try to establish power, some power running for a, uh, at least a first down or two if he could. Well, I think, and I think, too, for all, on Alleman's side, as the captains meet out there at, at the center of the field, but uh, Healy had an opportunity to break loose. And it, it took a screen pass to do that, but if a screen pass works once, it could work twice. We're going to see that play And again. Uh, I think we'll see that again, and I think our fans had an opportunity. If, I don't know how they could have forgotten from last year, but if, if they have forgotten uh, what a great uh, speed runner he is, I think they had a, a chance to witness that on that screen pass for the touchdown uh, about a, what we finally figured that was, uh, almost an 80-yard touchdown run, so on, on a, or actually a touchdown pass. So let's just see. UT will receive the kickoff and... Uh, We'll be heading towards the scoreboard in 30 seconds to go, Brian. So why don't we take a real short break here for maybe a commercial, and we'll be right back with the start of the third quarter. Two, one. And we're back. Say Alleman's getting ready to kick off. Pat Voss is setting the tee up out there. And early here, I, I think the third quarter, the first uh, series or so, is pretty important in this ball game. UT has to regain control if they're going to Hang on, and Alleman, of course, has to keep that momentum going their way, try to get a three and out here and get this uh, thing established without the mistakes. Well, 
kickoff going back. Number 11 for the Panthers, Cody Duran. Going to go wedge middle, coming right up the middle. One, oh. broke one tackle. At he met 20. Mr. Woods. Ryan <laughs> Woods said hello. Hello, perfect tackle. Got the ball out the 24-yard line. Well, I want to remind you, this is a QCA TV sports production on Channel 38, Cox Communication. And it's brought to you by the Independent Insurance Services Incorporated in uh, Locust Street in Davenport. That's right, 1519. If you want to call them, try 383-5559 for your insurance needs. Wishbone by the Panthers. You said something might happen. Ron Drew gets up in it. Nice defense. Out across the 25 to about the 27-yard line. Number 25 getting up off the bottom there, Darren Lavery. Darren's uh, getting some playing time. He's he got a lot of playing time locking, in that defensive right. line tonight. You better believe it. Well, this time of year, you see some time every once in a while, you see some new people. Is he, where's he playing? Is he playing nose guard, or what's he doing there? He's a nose guard out there. He's going to offset a little bit. And Panthers. Pass, no, wide open, oh, nice play defensively. Pass a little bit behind Ryan Lemon, but also knocked down. Well, that brings up a big third down play for the Panthers, and the Pioneers are about to get a three and out here. Well, that's what you said they needed, Brian, and you're absolutely right there, and UT's gonna have to come up with a play here, or the momentum's gonna shift. And once, you know, you've been involved in sports a long time. I mean, for you, a real long time. You know that momentum can jump back and forth across this field That's in a real right. big hurry. And how important it is, because if you lose it, it's hard to get it back. You better believe it. Yeah, fullback trap inside. Oh, oh. Harris. He's going to be within a yard. So he got that first down. Think so? I think so, unless they bring that ball well, back somewhere. Well, the set's going to be important. Whoa. That ball didn't get marked quite where I thought it was going to, but they're going to have to measure this one. You make the call. I think he's... Uh, just a, about an inch short. Ooh, man. It's a decision time if you're standing over there looking down the line for Coach Tracy. I mean, it's not a good place in the field to do it, but it'd be awful inviting looking. Hey, I think you called it. He got uh, it. He got her. About half a length of the football, hmm. Brian. Those lines, you Boy, never know. Oh, oh Harris. He, oh, he got turned backwards. Kept them legs going, he did. didn't he? He was running as hard going backwards as most guys do going forward. And, and really, what happens there a lot of times, Alleman had a bunch of guys in a tackle, but they didn't have anybody that could clean it up. They just didn't have anybody stop his momentum. So UT gets a first down out around the 34-yard line and wishbone again. Ron Drew on the carry gets stood up in the hole, but he's still alive. Alleman's not tackling very well. Matt Franks on that tackle for the Pioneers is... That's not so good that he had to get in on that tackle after they blitzed into the backfield and they had hands all over Drew there. They really did. Ron stayed alive, though. And here again, we talk about fresh legs. He's He's been a starter throughout most of the year. And with this backfield change, with putting uh, Freeman at quarterback and Lemon back there, why Drew was kind of odd man out tonight. Full back in, penalty flag down before the play started. So this will be, be a dead ball foul. That UT. tackle, Adam Stimson, yep. Stimson on that tackle. UT's coming off the ball real hard. Not time they might have got off just a legal procedure. Might have got off just a little bit early, but again, Panthers get, what, four yards on first down. But basically now it's like losing a yard on first down. So it sets up a second and ten. Second and ten. Mm -hmm. Ball now back to the Panther 34-yard line. Cody Duran, number 11, brings the play in. He'll be a wide receiver coming to the left side. Wishbone, tight end to the right. Lemon on the carry, drives off tackle, using that 190 pounds, takes it out across the 35 to about the 38 yard line. Barry getting up off the bottom of that tackle. Boy, Ryan Lemon got his shoulders turned, Brian, towards that goal line. Ran he was, hard, didn't he? Yes, he sure did. A little higher than you'd like to see somebody run if you had your, your choice. But he got up in there in a hurry. Big third down play again for the Panthers. Panthers going wishbone again. Flanker wide, uh, split in rather to the right of the formation. Sweep this way, Ron Drew on the carry. Nowhere to run, penalty flag down. Drew had nowhere to go and was stopped uh, just across the 35 yard line. That's gonna probably be holding against UT and will be declined, I'm sure. 
by Alleman, holding against the Panthers. Alleman declines. It wasn't three and out, Brian, but it was six it was and good out. good enough. It was six and out. Yep. And, and they're not going to give up field position, probably, because the ball is still only out to the 36-yard 30, well, line, and UT will have to punt. So the Pioneers hang on here early in the third, and they're going to get an opportunity to get the ball with probably pretty decent field position. I would think so. Panthers in maximum protection, two tight ends. Three-man wall back, Terrence Clark to kick. Good snap. Ooh, kind of an end door. That could roll. That could roll a long way. Oh, nice play there. Nice play by Ron Drew on the boundary. First and ten. Alleman. A good field position, Brian. 39 yard line. Extra fielded that ball and started up the sideline there and got a little return there. Must have got about seven yards out of it back. We'll take a look at that Panther defense. They break it up. That's the line. They've been playing most of the ball game now. Ward and imminent tackles. Ricardo Harris is a nose guard. DeFreeze. Quarterback Sneak. And Fagerland are the defensive ends. Ruthie keeps the ball. A little quarterback sneak right off the reel. They must have seen something there at halftime. They, they thought they could take advantage of leaving the center open yep. there. Well, they, that play worked a couple times. I'll tell you, both linebackers from UT, Harris and uh, Hancock, closed on that one in a big hurry. Panther secondary, let's see what adjustments they've had to make back there. Terrence Clark, number 34, is playing in here now as a defensive back in place of uh, Mike Rickey, who was injured late in the first half. A big hit up inside by UT that time, stuffed the runner. Middle of that one in a big hurry. 76 has got to be at the bottom of that pile somewhere. There he is, Kevin Ward, number 76. I think the first one there. Barry got his opportunity over there, but he was met pretty quick there that time. Well, is this the time you go back to that screen pass? Third and nine, or third and five isn't necessarily the ideal time when they're expecting pass, but we'll see. That could be okay. They're coming hard. There's quick screen. Oh, that was read pretty good by Lemon. Man, we've got a penalty flag down there or not? Uh, the Alleman bench is kind of in the way, but that's not going to be enough for the first down. Alleman may have to well punt that ball right back to the Panthers. Well, Lemon will. knew something there. He took off the bit that ball was snapped you for bet. that man. You betcha. Well, they've only done two things off that that we've seen. We haven't seen Alleman every game. Against Geneseo, they put uh, Healy in motion and tried to run him deep. And then that time they ran him out here and ran him on a quick stop. I think they ran one time too. Alleman needs a guy on their punt team. I think they got him. Ryan Woods getting ready to kick. Line drive could be returned. Oh, nice kick. That ball rolls inside to five. Rolls dead at the three-yard line. And UT takes over, leading 17-7 with 7.04 to go in the third quarter. But, Brian, they take over on their own. It's three-yard line. Man. Well, this, this keeps the momentum in Alleman's favor here. They got good field position. They got UT pinned back. And... Uh, UT's got to be careful not to make a mistake right here. You're exactly right. Well, you can't give up anything easy. Right now, the Panther defense is good enough, other than one big play, to 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 stop Alleman. But you can't do anything on your offensive group. Let's see what's in the backfield. Going to split backs now. Matt Harris on the carry. Got that ball out across the five, maybe to the maybe to the six-yard line, but not much farther. Gain of maybe three. They're going to mark it right on the five-yard line, so it's a gain of two. Chris Edwards involved in that tackle. It's just a straight dive play out of that split backs, and you got to kind of run at the bubble. We always talk running at the bubble, where you got to find where the linebacker's at. You got to kind of run at him, and then kind of, kind of hope he can pop off the blocks there. I formation this time, Lemon, the tail of the I formation, sweep, Lemon running right, turns the corner. No, does not turn the corners. Tackled. Maybe at the five or inside the five. Chris Edwards again ran him down out there. Hard to get around those corners. They got good defensive ends. Uh, we've talked about that. How many? What? See, how many? How many years these guys played Ooh. defensive end for all of them? Same guys well, been I, here six or eight years. They've been there ever since we've been announcing the games, haven't they? <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. Big third down play. UT needs a first down here. We're at the six-minute mark, halfway through the third quarter here. 
Panthers going to go end over, coming this way with three receivers to this side. Oh, little backfield problem. Look out. Freeman got that ball away. Thank goodness for the Panthers. That was going to end up being a safety, and that could have been critical in a ball game like this. But UT three and out. Oops, we got a flag. Penalty against UT. I doubt it they'll accept that. Now the question now, let's take a look. Where was the penalty? When did, where did the penalty take place? It did not take place in the end zone, so they'll they'll refuse this penalty, Brian. One thing our fans might pay attention to, it's probably holding. If it was holding on the field of play, it's just half the distance to the goal line. If it was holding in the end zone, it becomes a safety. That's a big difference. Where he moved yes. that flag from about on the goal line out to the one yard line makes a big difference. He gave him a, a good play there. Yep. Yep. Well, the Panthers have to punt now. Snap becomes pretty critical here and the blocking. Back. Clark has nowhere to go back here. Good snap. Holloman, a lot of pressure. Low kick. Oh, good effort out here. Look out. He can turn the corner. Healy again. Oh, nice play out here by Matt Harris. UT ran the ball in a big hurry there. Number 25, Ernie Jack got there. Number 50 got there in a big hurry, Josh Tiranis. So Pioneers got themselves great field position. Be first down on about the 29 yard line and they got just what they were looking for to start this second half. They got an opportunity again. Man, I'll tell you what, not much time coming out of the huddle by Altman. They're in and out of that huddle in a hurry that right now. That screen pass would look pretty good anytime right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, they got to get the ball to Healy, that's for sure. Fullback trap, look out. Oh, great play Barry that time. Nice run up the middle there. Going to get about five. Well, Brian Inman, six. Brian Inman, number 75 that time, saved the touchdown. He hung on and hung on and hung on. Whew, he could have popped that clean because the motion man, uh, took took away the, the the defender secondary defender uh, that opens that middle wide up when you do it that way. Full Barry back again, again right up the middle. Not so much room that time. Him and in the middle of that thing again. Linebackers there. Number 15 keeps jumping in there. We talk about Ryan Lemon all the time. He's coming from the defensive secondary, but he cleans up out of that secondary as good as anybody I've ever seen. I think. So we're looking at third and short, right? It's, it's third and short, third and about two. Huge play. Obviously, allman has got two downs to get the first down here. They might be thinking of a field goal here along the way if they had to. I don't think so. Second man through. Oh, look out. Touchdown. No. Oh, five yards. Tackles yard there. Saved it. Woo, Cody Duran, number 11, saved the touchdown. I thought he was going. Healy that time. Found a little room. Uh, the momentum, Bryant. Yes. Critical in a game like this. 4.25 to go. We're going to be looking at a three-point ball game shortly here if the Panthers don't stiffen up. Yeah, see what the Panthers do defensively here. They've been playing a 50 all the way down the field. It looks like they're at least lined up right now in a 50. That's a nice play, that last play. Nice play. Second man through kind of stuff. Score quick pitch. Dangerous play. Nice run that time. I don't know about you, Brian, but that that play scares me. <laughs> hey, they're trying to get the ball quickly out there to Healy, where he's got a chance to run. Well, I've been watching too much baseball, but I think I think the the receiver called for a fastball, but I think he got tossed he got a changeup. Change up there, didn't he? <laughs> it's like, come on, ball, get to me, man. Come to me, ball. I'm pretty fast. That ball's going to have to get here in a hurry. <laughs> or everybody else going to be here. <laughs> Healy did a nice job. Got that ball down to about the two yard line, though. Panther linebackers up in there hard. Ooh, not much room there. Good defensive play by the Panthers again. Down, it looks like about what inside the one, Brian. Whoo! That's what you call knocking on the door right now. Play coming in from the sideline. Adrian DeFreeze, number 63, uh, for the Panthers, in on that tackle. Yeah, Scott, basically, it's one of those double name things again. Is that Scott did a nice job there. Scott's pinching down from his defensive end position, though, so you got to kind of watch that. Dive inside, Barry. A touchdown for Allman, Brian. All righty. That's going to bring her up to 17 to 13 with 2.49 to go in the third quarter as the Pioneers 
did just what they had to do here in the third quarter. They stopped the Panthers and then fought for the field position and moved her down here and shoved it in there. They're yeah. going to make this a 17-14 ball game if they get this extra point. Well, uh, you're absolutely right. The field position game, the punting game by Allen put the ball dead on the three-yard line. And then they took possession of the ball again out here uh, in excellent field position after the uh, Panther punt. UT's had the ball twice and punted twice. Ooh, UT just about got there, but the kick is good. So, 17-14 with 2.49 to go in the third quarter. Pat Voss on the extra point kick, and Bryant, what looked like a route about uh, we got ourselves a ball game. 40 minutes ago, looks like a wild Western Big Six finish here, so at 2.49 to go, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back in just a minute. Three, two, one. Hey, we're back, Brian. Yeah, Pat Voss is getting ready to kick this off as the Pioneers are really high now. They're in this ball game. They know they have an opportunity to win this. Cody Duran, number 11, and Ron Drew deep for the Panthers. They're going to get a chance. Oh, nice kick. Ron Drew is going to take that ball at the four-yard line. The wall is set up. Oh, a great play by Alvin. Ron Drew could get through there, but he didn't. Oh, my. I thought he was through for a second. It was close. One of the blockers made it through there for him. Nice blocking up front. That's 72. That's John Ritchie. And Jeremy Sanders, number 74, did a decent job. Tony DeJulio, number 88, on that tackle for the Pioneers. And here we go again. UT coming out. Let's see what backfield Coach Tracy decides on. This time it's Hancock and Lemon. I formation. Mike Freeman still a quarterback. Lemon on the carry. Power playoff tackle out of the eye and not much game. They're getting the UT kids kind of turned sideways right now, Bryant. Chris Edwards in on that tackle, or, or Woods, excuse me, in on that tackle for the Pioneers. Of course, he can turn you sideways in a big yes, hurry. Yes, he out. can. Well, second down and about seven for the Panthers, second and eight. Ball is at the 31-yard line, UT's 31-yard line. Offensive line for the Panthers have to come alive now. A little confusion coming out of the huddle by UT right now. Not quite sure what's going on here, maybe. Pass. No, a fly pattern. Oh, nice effort out there. Running on the fly, number 81's Pete Dokulis, and the pass from uh, Mike Freeman was short, but Mike had lots of lots of players in his face, Brian. Mike didn't get a chance to set his feet and throw that ball because he had to get rid of it. I'll tell you, Panthers need a drive right now. They go three and out in this situation. Well, Alleman's gonna gonna tie this ball game up or go ahead. I'll I'll just about predict that one. The momentum has jumped over to the green shirt side. Big play by the Panthers could take that away right now. Wide receivers to the to the uh, left sweep. Ryan Lemon turns the corner. He gets stopped. Short of the first down, looks like, Bryant. He got a little room there. And nice job. Got it out across the 35. You see where they mark Gab. It's going to be fourth and about four. At the 40-yard line, Brian, and UT's going to have to punt the ball away again. The Pioneer fans are going crazy well, over here. They're finally waking up over on this side. They got a lot to holler about. Their, their Pioneers are doing a heck of a job right now. Well, the Hall of Fame night or Coach Just halftime talk or something has made a big difference here because they're in it for sure now. They're looking for the fake. Terrence Clark to kick. It's off a nice line drive kick. Could be another one of those bouncers. Whoa, over his head. Did he, he touch that, that ball? ball? He touched it, Brian. He touched it. UT's after it. Pick it up and run. Oh, oh my got, got the ball. You got a flop on that ball. You do. You do. Alleman recovers. Almost a, a game break. Oh, was that state. wild or what? That's football. I think we need a re Can we get a replay of that? Is there any way we can do that? Holy cow. At least five UT players had every opportunity. But Clark's kicks have not been as good as we've seen him kick this this night. No. But one thing about it, when they hit, they're running like mad, <laughs> you know? He took a big bounce over Ekstrom's hand. I think he just touched it. And the chase was on. Yes, it was. Pass. Oh, UT should catch this one. Beautiful Whoa. interception out there. Brian Kendall on the intercept. Very fortunate that he didn't take that back from oh all the way. Oh, my. Well, Allman tries to strike quickly with the pass, but you can't against good varsity defenses. 
you cannot lay that ball out there like that and hope somebody's going to run under it. Because somebody will, but most of the time they're going to have the other color shirt on. The intended receiver there was Matt Brandy, number 84. Now UT's got to get fired up, Brian. Well, this could be the change now that helps UT we get a little momentum play. back. They, they need to move the ball now if they're going to win seven. this ball game. If they, if they only get three out of this, well, then uh, Alleman's still hanging right in there. Straight dive. Looks like Terry, who you got running this time? Harris. Harris. Matt Harris. Chipped up by Woods. Wood, not Woods. Ryan Wood. There's only one of them. Well, it seems like there's two or it three of them like out there. It seems like there's two, yeah. Yeah, that was an, uh, a short game, maybe three yards, but it's four down territory for the Panthers. 106 to go here in the third quarter. Second down. Quarterback keeps, pitch, oh, bad pitch back here. Alleman recovers the football at the 35 yard line. Panthers run inside Veer, the pitch gets away. Alleman recovers at the 35. Three huge plays, Brian, have happened here in less than a minute of actual football Woo! play. My gracious, and, and UT is lucky that Alleman hadn't got six points on the board. It's wild now. I'll tell you what, sometimes I'm getting kind of woozy. You've got it, I've it's, got it, who's got it? It's wearing me out. I can't figure <laughs> out whose turn it is to call the plays. But it's your turn. That, you uh, that option hasn't went well for the Panthers no. all night. Not been a good Solomars one. Sophomores didn't run it well. Oh. Oh, Barry just don't want to be denied now. There's a big five or six yard run there, Brian. Nice big first down play for Alleman here. Go in counting here in the third quarter. Lots, all kinds of time for both teams, actually. Yeah. And we're not down to the point where anybody needs to panic, either team, at this point in time. But, but UT squandered a chance to turn this momentum around there. You better there. believe it. Oh, man. I'll tell you what, the green shirts Woo. are playing harder right now, Brian. Yes, sir, the green shirts want it bad right now. Healy with a nice run for a first down. Dana's bringing his team off the field. He says, that's enough that's for this right. quarter. Let's talk about this. Well, 15 seconds and counting here. Now, Alma Coaster talking to the officials about something. I can't quite figure out what it is, but they're not going to run. They're not going to run another play. And, Brian, we're going to go fourth action here. Western Big Six football is the Alleman football players turn and put up four fingers. The crowd joins in. And right now we've got Donnie Brooks, 17-14, fourth quarter. Let's take a short break here until we come back for the fourth quarter and we'll bring you the last quarter of this ball game. Okay, see you later. See you later. Have a